In this episode, we're going to be installing some performance bracing on the MX-5. That's right, because when it's stiffer, you can go harder. Welcome to another episode of Mighty Car Mods, proudly supported by Just Car Insurance. Now, we've been very busy, haven't we, Marty? That's Listen to those birds. I oh, do. That's Australian birds. Did that bird just ruin it? No, no, but someone on our recent video, that's a, that's a, that's a galah. Oh, that's wow. That's a relorotic thing. You know what someone said on one of our recent videos? They said, why have you got monkeys there? They thought it was... <laughs> Um, they're native Australian birds you can hear. Yeah. Um, oh look, the cat's about to eat it. Oh wow, that's going to be epic. Oh. Anyway, uh, oh, let's get back it. to oh, it. Oh, we've... <laughs> oh wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Um, wow. Feathers. Oh, yes. Now, we've been really busy lately. Uh, we've been we've been travelling around, Marty, haven't we? That's right. We've been all over the place. We're in the UK and we've been to Japan. And we're also filming in um, in Vegas recently. All those videos are on our second channel, MCM TV 2 so you can check that out. But today, we're continuing the build of the MX-5. These are the bracing components that we're going to be installing on the MX-5 today. Now there's a number of benefits. Number one of course, reducing your body roll during cornering and number two, strengthening the chassis system. Now because we're going to be connecting a bunch of the different suspension components together, the whole thing can work as one system and each of the existing suspension components will do a better job of doing its job and that is particularly important when we've got a convertible like this which has less structural rigidity than a car that has a full body. Now this is made of mild steel not aluminium so it is a little bit heavier but it is twice as strong as aluminium per size and per weight. Now if this is such a great thing for handling the question is why isn't it coming on mass produced cars? Well two things number one is cost and number two is NVH which is noise vibration and harshness and that is going to be particularly apparent when combined with performance suspension like coilovers. Now everyone has a different threshold of what they're willing to accept in terms of NVH but our goal of course is to get the car back on the track and doing better lap times and we're confident even with the added weight that we're going to be able to do this with the MX-5 and it's important as well to note that this stuff it is quite light, it is adding a little bit of weight, but go on a diet, take some laxatives, and you're probably going to be losing about as much weight as you're adding. So with that said, let's go to Marty and find out what tools we're going to need. These are the tools you're going to need. You're going to need a socket set. You're going to need some pretty hefty sockets. We are dealing with suspension stuff, so it's better to have some of the bigger impact sockets. You're also going to need some spanners. Same deal, lots of leverage is good for getting those bolts undone. The cordless rattle gun is always handy, but most important, you're going to need some jack stands because we're going to get under the car. We're going to borrow mechanical Stig's hoist, but he's over in Vegas and sending us back some pretty uh, messed up photos and stories. So we're doing it in the garage and we're going to jack the car up and put it on these. We actually are going to do it man we're actually gonna go step one check up your car first jack up your car get it as high as you can and remember safety first we're leaving the jack under the car in addition to the jack stands as an extra safety precaution first up we're installing the front cross member brace the braces come with both bolts and washers. Make sure you use washers on both sides so they don't pull through. Do you still love your MX-5, Martin, or have you lost the love a little bit? No, MX-5 is fantastic, dude. I mean, you, you still love it. On a, on a big rainy day like today, it's not very inviting to go and drive it. Um, you you're know, not over it yet? No, I'm not over it. It's great. It's because it's so simple and cheap, and if you're going to have a convertible, like if you go and spend, you know, 20, 30 grand on a convertible, then it's kind of like... I don't know, I'd feel like for a car that's not that practical, it's kind of a bit of a waste of money. But if you're going to have something that's kind of still cheap to own and to buy, and then it's modified and turboed and all those good things, then it's great. It doesn't own much money and it just works, man. Such a mad car. Brace yourselves. Oh, wow. Yeah, it happened. I wonder if it's worth lock tightening them on, Marty, because they're not actually lock tight nuts that it's supplied with. What do you reckon? Yeah, they'll get vibrated around a lot. 
Do you remember those um those vibrating platform weight loss things from back in the day? What do they do? Do they like they're just a strap you tie around your butt? And then it just like vibrates your butt heaps and then it makes you lose weight. That is like the most obscene and grotesque way of doing exercise. Yeah. I saw another one <laughs> where you just get these electrodes and you stick them on your body. Yeah. And then you've got a little controller and you electrocute the fat. But it's like, like meh, meh, meh. And because it's on the muscles making the muscle contract. Yeah. You can just sit down and watch TV while you electrocute the fat off your body. I have no idea what, what we're talking about, Martin. Dude, Other these than... holes are awesome. Look at this. So there's a hole. Yes. Oh. We'll get a close up of it. But there's I'm a hole. getting a close up, Martin. There's a hole that you can stick your bolt through to then flip him over and get your bolt through the right bit. Oh, Martin, they got it right at Mazda, didn't they? Yeah. It's like they knew. How did they know? I don't know, Martin. How did they know we were going to want to do this in like 23 years' because time? Because they were smart, Martin. Dude, YouTube didn't even exist 23 Maybe years ago. Maybe they zoom zoomed back to the future. There's a freaking random cat! The install is simple, but remember, it's different for each car. And a quick tip, this whole job is a whole lot quicker and easier if you've got a friend to help. In our case, a flathead screwdriver helps hold the top of the bolt still so we can tighten the nut. A rattle gun is a massive win for this particular install. They're cheap and useful for heaps of different jobs on your car. Literally, the longest part of this install is taking the plastic off all the parts. That's how easy it is. We get so many emails and stuff from young people that just got their cars and they're like, what do I want to do to make it go faster? What should I do? And we always say handling mods. And of all the handling mods, this one has got to be the easiest. You put it under your car, you bolt it on. Of course, if you're not kind of sure what you're doing, make sure you go to a suspension place or whatever and get it checked out all properly because suspension is still a kind of a, has a large safety aspect to your driving. But this is really quick, really easy. So um, get on it. Okay, so this brace, sometimes it's known as a ladder brace. Um, this connects to the two existing bolts that are up here on the, underneath the chassis. And then at the back, we've got these kind of bracket things that hold on to the end of the chassis rail there. Here it is, Mark. I'll chuck you one. And we use one of those tricky bolts. So these bolts go up into the chassis rail like that, and then flip around and we use those. And that basically connects the front and the rear. And apparently this one makes quite a big difference, so I'm told by MX-5 enthusiasts. And they know everything. Words to life, mate. Yeah, man. The rear chassis rail mount holes needed to be widened just enough to get the captive nut through. The bolt holds the brace in place, with most of the forces being exerted on the side of the chassis rails. If you're gonna drive around with like two millimeters of clearance with your awesome coilovers or your airbags, remember that these rails are holding your car together and if they get completely hammered, they stop holding your car together and that's bad. A small amount of encouragement from a hammer and the rear mounts are done. The central brace can then be lifted up under the car. It will need to come off if we're ever changing gearboxes or exhaust, but it's only a few bolts and easily removed. Now the final bit of our bracing is this front strut brace. Now these things are cheap and they're really, really easy to install. Now the manufacturer of these says that they're actually designed to absorb some of the impact in the unfortunate event of having an accident, which means that you don't get as much chassis damage. What else can you tell me about a Martin? Um, they're connecting things. That's all right. They're only four bolts to put on. Some of them use six bolts and they connect the two front shock towers together. Now it's not a handling cure-all. It's not going to make amazing differences, but it's all about doing small incremental changes to make it better. So it's probably one of the cheapest and maddest mods you can do. Well, other than of course, one of these high quality stickers that's available from the MightyCarMods.com website. A lot of people are always saying, hey, that's a cool sticker. You can get them from MightyCarMods.com. Did you make a Board. That's right mate, just like a high school project. Look wow. at that. 
Um, so there it is. Now, in terms of these, Martin, I think it's time to put it on. I did want to mention as well, though, that putting this on as part of a full system is what it's all about. Like, some people just put these on by themselves and that's cool, but I think for this bracing to really be most effective, it's about doing it as a complete system. I also want to say that it's a really hard thing to try and quantify how much this makes your car better. It's not like you can put this one on and then put a different brand on and go, well, this one is better because of that one. But what we will be able to see when we go back to the track and hand the car back to a professional race car driver is how the car feels. And ultimately, it's all about the feel. So Martin, let's put it on, mate. Fits over the turbo, which is a bonus. Yeah. Now the most common problem when installing these is snapping the studs on your strut tops which sucks ass. So use some WD-40 and be really careful when removing the nuts. This is probably one of the easiest mods you can do to just about any car. Just make sure you get one that will clear the various bits of the engine. Some go right back to the firewall, some are adjustable and some have more than two points of attachment. So do some research to see what's best for your own model of car. You gave me this torque wrench for my birthday a couple of years ago, dude. Oh, did I? Yeah, That's yeah. nice, man. Yeah, great present, man. Saved many a bolt from destruction. You can get torque specs for your strut tops from a service manual or jump on the Google. Everything's on and we're all done. So strut braces, there it is. It is a very simple, quick and easy mod. You could probably do the whole car in about two hours. That's right. Now, it's not something that's really easy to quantify without actually just driving the car and seeing how it feels and also taking it around a track and seeing how that affects your times. Yep. Now, the exciting news is we have the new issue of Mighty Car Mods Magazine. Mighty Car Mods Magazine number six is out and it has loads of MX-5 stuff. The MX-5 is on the cover and there's the whole story of how we got the car right from buying it to where it is today. Yep, so make sure you check out here to look at the magazine. It's an independent magazine, but we believe it's as good as any of the commercial magazines you can buy. They're over 100 pages, they're not full of ads, they're full of awesome stuff written by people just like you and just like us, full of mad car stuff. Now, probably the most common question we've been getting asked recently is when are we gonna see the new cars? Now, my new car, we're not gonna see it for a little while. The reason being that I've had to lend it to someone uh, one of our friends actually had their car stolen and really needed a car, so they've borrowed my new car. There's been a spate of like car thefts at the moment. Uh, we've heard about them on the Mighty Car Mods forum and on Facebook, and these days it seems that people are actually breaking into houses and stealing the keys. So a quick tip is just don't leave your keys in the kitchen bowl or on the back of the door. Get a little bit more creative if you feel like there's a chance that your car might get stolen. That's right. Now, in an upcoming episode, we will see my new car. As soon as we finish this MX-5 stuff, we smashed it around the track. A day like today, where it's pouring around, is not so great for the track. We've got a couple more mods still to do. Yeah, that's right. And as soon as we finish the MX-5, then we're going to be on to the new cars. But we didn't want to get on to them now because we're halfway through this project and we really want to commit to finish it off. So that's what's happening. The magazine is out now. There's stickers available on the Mighty Car Mods website. And uh, next up, Marty, there's more MX-5 Madness. I'm quite excited about the next episode. So thanks for watching, guys. See you soon. I'm hungry for some beef stir fry. You're actually gonna get beef. Yeah. Dude, I'm gonna, try, I'm gonna try that tofu one that they do. Yeah. But you know where they use that special sauce stuff? Nah. The special sauce? Yeah. Yeah, it's not sauce, man. There's a freaking random cat just walked into the... There's a 